This is Twin Cities Adventures, and in today's video, we're going to show you how we made our home into a certified natural wildlife habitat home. Right here, you can see our certificate, certified wildlife habitat. And right here, you can see it is the dedicated to Jason Franklin and Samuel Brzee. In addition to the certificate, the National Wildlife Federation sent us this yard sign, and we're gonna hang that on a post and put it in the front yard so people could see it. All right, so we're gonna show you the criteria that we had to fill to become a certified natural habitat home. Currently, I'm on the National Wildlife Federation website, and let's go through all of the criteria that we did to become certified. We're gonna go to create, and then scroll down, and it talks about food, water, cover, places to raise the young, and sustainable practices. First of all, we made a commitment about three years ago to not use any kind of weed killers or pesticides in our garden, right boys? Yep. Yeah, because we have a big koi pond in our backyard and we didn't want any runoff in our pond and we wanted to attract amphibians like frogs and toads. That's a big croaker. Yep. Mm -hmm. You always make sure to grab it in between. Let in between the arms and legs. Lightly, you don't want to squeeze him and hurt him. And make sure you um, uh, stay on his stomach. Uh -huh. Stay on his stomach so he doesn't use his self-defense on you, which is peeing. Okay, so. Just come over here. You want to hear, let's hear him, see if we can hear him chirp. Oh, you hear that? Cute little toady. You can see his chin moving. Yep. Okay, go release him into the shade garden. Put him right here. Bye bye little toad. Bye bye little toad. And for them to be happy and healthy in our garden, right boys? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then let's click on the next thing here, which is food right here. So if we go to the food, and drop down here it's uh, these are some of the food uh, items that you can provide for animals in your home and this is seeds from plants we have those berries yep oh here's some raspberries ready to pick Franklin look at those why don't you pick them here get those three one, get that other one there two. there's one under there too get that guy uh -huh. Under there. See? We'll have to give those, hold on, give them a little taste test. They're completely organic. Go ahead and taste them. Mm. Tell me what you think. You can eat them all. It's really good. Yummy? Yep. Uh, nectar from Check. like flowers. Yes. It's a bee friendly yard. Here's a perfect example. The bees are still loving everything. Hey, Mr. Ladybug. Dig it, Matt. Foliage and twigs. We planted a lot of dwarf sized trees and a lot of trees. Uh -huh. Nuts. We don't have any nuts that I can think of. Fruits. Yes, we have those. We have plums. Plums, beginning of July. Apples, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries. See how the blueberries are doing? <laughs> current. These are the current back here. See, there's like black current and the red current is coming in nicely. Cherries. Here's the cherry trees. Look at all those cherries. Mm -hmm. um, peaches and here's the peaches on my peach tree give you an idea how big they are July 2nd yummy peaches
pears. Yeah. Try to give you a, an idea of how big the pears are beginning of July. You can see there's a pear right up there. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. And then a lot of fruit. Sap we have from our evergreen tree. Mm -hmm. uh, pollen we have a huge uh, we have a butterfly garden and lots of flowering mm -hmm. vines. Um, suet Su Samuel. Suet, yeah. Um, we will leave a link to at the end of the video for the homemade suet we made. Now you see we have filled all of our containers. And the yeah. the, the suet uh, pine cone feeder that we made too, right? Uh huh. Pine cone suet feeder. Okay, and then bird feeders. So we mm -hmm. put uh, bird feeders Plenty out. Plenty of bird feeders in the front, and we'll show you a, a f picture of that. Uh huh. And then squirrel feeders. They pretty much eat our bird uh -huh. food. Hummingbird feeders, uh, the hummingbirds eat our honeysuckle around the shed and they eat the flowers that come out of the um, hostas and um, some of the other things. And then butterfly feeders, uh, they eat uh, all the pollen from our butterfly garden, don't they? Yeah, and so if you count these up, we have 12 of the listed. The next thing we'll talk about is water. And if you click on that and scroll down, um, it says here bird baths. Yeah, we have lots of various bird baths around the yard. bird bath in the winter time. Uh, lake, we live one block off of Lake Cornelia in Edina, which brings in a lot of wildlife. Mm -hmm. uh, stream, there's Minnehaha Creek is right down the road, and we did a lot of tubing down Minnehaha Creek this summer, didn't we? Mm -hmm. uh, seasonal pool, we don't have a pool. Uh, ocean, no. Water garden and pond. Franklin, why don't you talk about that? Yeah, we have a 2,000 gallon koi pond that brings in lots of birds and uh, frogs and toads love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the river, no. uh, butterfly area, rain garden, or a spring. All right, the next one that we will go over is cover. And if we scroll down to that, here is... Uh, wooded area. We have lots of trees in our backyard mm -hmm. and in our front. Um, let's see, ground cover, rock pile or wall, cave, roosting boxes, dense shrubbery and thicket, evergreens, which we have. Yeah, we have a huge evergreen um, in the back with plenty of bird houses mm -hmm. on it. Bird houses up in the tree. It's always fun to watch the birdies. We built ledges on our shed for uh, robins to uh, have their nests and lay little babies. Let's go peek up in the nest here where the robin was. Yep, and we had those last year. And what uh -huh. about the vines? Mm -hmm. And the vines, we have little honeysuckle and in house finches, um, like burrow in those honeysuckles. Take a video of the house finch babies in the honeysuckle over there. All right, check that out. Honeysuckle vine. Those are the baby house finches living up in. Hmm. We'll show you another clip where we built little log piles and we put them in our shade garden for the toads and frogs or maybe garden snakes to hide. 
make homes, that's really cool. They like that. And we also have toad homes in our shade garden. <laughs> Peek it out. All right, so now if we click on young. Um, so for young, we have many different places for animals to raise their babies. And we just listed those reasons for like bird houses, the ledges, and the honeysuckle. Yep. And then the next thing is sustainability. So I'll talk about our watering system. We do have an underground sprinkler system, but I have it turned down, so we use it just at very minimal use when it's really dry and sunny out in the middle of summer. And I monitor every part of the yard, and if it looks like it's doing well, I turn the sprinkler system down. And if anything looks like it's dying, then I just slightly turn up that zone, and that way we use minimal use of water. And then as far as uh, organic practices, Franklin, our whole yard and gardens are all organic. We can just pluck our fruit right off the trees or bushes and eat it right there. Yeah, so we that's don't right. even have to wash it. Yep, that's nice. All right, the next category is wildlife. And what kinds of wildlife will your garden help? Uh, birds, insects, amphibians, reptiles, small mammals. So. What are some of the coolest things you guys have seen in our front and backyard so The far? coolest things we've seen in our yard is probably a bald eagle teaching its baby how to hunt. It was in our front and side yard, and it was hanging out in the tree. We'll show you a clip of that right now. now. She's, well, he's gonna, oh, another one, another one. What? Another one right there. That's... That's the... And then Samuel, what are some really cool things you've seen in our back and front? Um, right? I've seen the frogs and toads lay big bunches of e eggs in our pond, mm -hmm. and that's really cool. Mm -hmm. We can show you clips of that like, yep. right now. Frog eggs. Okay. Frog, Lots of them. Frog eggs. Grab that other pile up. We got two big clumps. Okay. Last video I showed you the eggs of a toad, and this is a tadpole, the second form of, of the toad's life, right okay. here. Cute little tadpole swimming around. Yeah. Okay. Tadpole. First I showed you the eggs, then the fresh tadpoles with no legs, and then here is uh, the uh, tadpoles with small legs and and shrinking their tails. How old are they? Six weeks old. Six weeks old? Go ahead and pick that up. We'll take a look at little toadies. What have you got there, Franklin? Right here I have a seven week old little, little. toad and he's just losing his tail. Okay, so why don't you pour him out and we'll okay. see how he hops along. Here, little toady toady toad, come over here. Cute little hopper. See how he hops around? See, he's just losing his little baby tail and you can see his fingers growing in too. Oh, isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. oh, he's a cute little hopper. And I've seen a uh, kingfisher in our backyard. Uh, we've had a great blue heron in our backyard. We do get mallards every spring that hang out and mate in our pond. I've seen a possum in our yard. We've seen raccoons. We've seen fox and coyotes come through our yards that hunt for rabbits. And of course, we have tons of rabbits and squirrels and chipmunks in the yard. We've had beautiful birds that we love watching. And then we built a pergola this uh, last year. We put grapevines up that, so I'm really looking forward to that. And then we also have a playlist of uh, planting morel mushrooms at home. We planted a morel mushroom garden on the north side of our house. What do you got growing there, Samuel? Oh, there's one morel okay. mushrooms right here, 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 and here. And then we have a playlist of urban gardening slash edible landscaping, and we'll put all those links at the end of our video here. All right, the next thing is certify. 
and basically certify to show your commitment to wildlife. And we just kind of went over all the criteria that you have to fulfill to do that. And we've turned our yard and gardens into a nature center. And I think the coolest benefit from this is seeing all the sorts of new wildlife in our yards and gardens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it's really cool and fun to just be able to go on in the backyard and just go pick some fruits and just eat them right off the tree. Let me just add one more thing here. Having a organic home with no pesticides or chemicals in our yard means that sometimes we have to hand pick the dandelions and you just kind of give up on the fact that there is clover growing in the yard, which it's not that big a deal. And then if we have a, like a little patch of crabgrass or something, we just hand dig that out. So our garden and yard looks really nice. We are going to be uploading a bunch of homemade jams and jelly recipes that we're doing. We're going to be making uh, dandelion jelly, honeysuckle jelly, peony jelly, rose petal jelly, clover jelly. We did jalapeno pepper jelly already, so we'll have a playlist of homemade jellies. Yeah, we did Mountain Dew jelly, but we didn't mm. grow Mountain Dew in our backyard. <laughs> but we did. anyway, we've had a lot of fun with the nature and the wildlife in our yard, and thanks for watching our video, and I hope that this inspires you to be more earth-friendly and uh, get in tune with the nature in your guys' yard too. Right, boys? Yeah, we hope we've inspired you to try to make your yard and gardens into a nature center like ours. This is Twin